Many witnesses, firemen and lots of people described the flowing molten metal, iron or steel at extremely hot temperatures and John Gross categorically denied their observations so that because their observations don't fit his preconceived notion he not only ignored evidence, he denied evidence. In an office fire, you cannot generate enough heat to melt steel. And yet we have evidence of molten iron in the microspheres, in the rubble pile, and the metal pouring out of the side of the tower. So what is this molten metal? It's a direct evidence for the use of thermite. An incendiary used by the military Thermite is a compound of iron oxide and aluminum, which when ignited sustains an extreme heat reaction, creating molten iron. In just two seconds, thermite can reach temperatures over 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit, quite enough to liquefy steel. We know that open air fires cannot burn hot enough to melt steel, but metal had melted at the base of the towers. I found a pore in the steel that, w that had pure sulfur. There's a government theory that calcium, calcium sulfate from gypsum boards was the source of sulfur, and that's wrong. Uh, calcium sulfate cannot go undergo any kind of a chemical reaction that produces the element sulfur, and we're not dealing with any kind of uh, compound of sulfur. When we're talking about sulfidation, we're dealt, dealing with uh, the element sulfur. There's a version of thermite called thermate which has uh, sulfur in the thermate and what the sulfur does is it, it uh, it's sort of like um, salt on ice. And it just basically makes the uh, steel melt at a lower temperature. And if you do a search on Google for uh, thermite and building demolition, you can find devices that have been fabricated uh, and invented that use thermite for building demolitions. In the case of thermite cutting charges, you would have heard far less noise since they are worked by uh, thermal heating, melting of the steel, rather than an explosive cutting as in RDX charges. Overflights had detected uh, with infrared camera 1400 degree Fahrenheit hotspots on the surface uh, of ground zero. And uh, that being there for a week, um, you know, indicates that there was something very hot going on below the surface. So thermite would also explain potentially the fact that the fires could not be put out at ground zero. The fires lasted for quite a while, but um, most importantly, they were deep within the pile where people would expect that the environment was oxygen starved. And uh, thermite could explain this because it has its own oxidant within. It's actually the uh, metallic oxide that provides the oxidant to allow the uh, incendiary thermite reaction to occur, even underwater. As much as 6% of the World Trade Center dust consisted of tiny, previously molten iron spheres. What does this tell us about the temperatures generated in the tower's destruction? When the USGS collected samples of the World Trade Center dust, uh, they found the iron microspheres. Insofar, the USGS does not have a valid explanation for the presence of these iron microspheres. So what do the microspheres contain? Uh, Iron is the main element, and then it has smaller portions of aluminum, sulfur, a trace of manganese. Most of them are less than about a tenth in, of an inch in diameter, and they're spherical. And they're found in all of the dust blown out of the buildings during collapse, no matter where in Manhattan the, that dust is picked up. You must have had a much hotter heat source for you to get 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit in order to melt the iron to get these molten spheres. Your heat source must be something like a chemical reaction, an exothermic chemical reaction. 
that reacts, in the case of thermite, reacts at 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit. My contention based on finding thermite residue in the dust is that it happened before. It didn't happen after in the, in the fires that ensued in the rubble pile afterwards. It's the, all the characteristics of the microspheres along with what I see in the attack of the, uh, the beams that were actually found tell me that thermite was involved in melting that, uh, those steel beams. Out of the ashes of the World Trade Center devastation rises the Freedom Tower, whose foundation, however, is shrouded in question. For example, in the World Trade Center dust, an international team of scientists find an advanced form of highly energetic nanothermite composites. What is it, and where does it come from? In the dust, we found what we characterize as unreacted thermitic material in the shape of some very tiny red-gray chips. And uh, in the reaction, they produce molten iron, which is the prime indication of a thermitic reaction. And such a reaction can be used to destroy steel structures. What we have found is a modern version of thermite, which we call nanothermite, which is produced in a different way. It is not just two powders being mixed. The material is actually built from the atom scale up. We call it the bottom up procedure, which is what you do in nanotechnology. The ingredients are much smaller, which means they are reacting faster and they are more easily ignited. The primary elements in the red material are aluminum, iron oxide, as well as silicon and carbon. The iron oxide appears in fasted grains, approximately 100 nanometers across. The aluminum appears in thin platelets about 40 nanometers thick. This is discussed in our paper in the Open Chemical Physics Journal published in uh, April of 2009. But so far, none of these uh, papers have been refuted in the literature, the scientific literature. So that means they are unchallenged in the scientific sense. They stand as a, an indictment, really, of the official story of 9-11. We also took paint that came off of the WTC steel and looked at that in the SEM and, and did a compositional analysis of that and found that it was not similar to the red-gray chip or the red layer of the red-gray chips. This cannot be paint. Paint does not have these exotic properties. It's impossible. This is material that is, uh, is of military use that really shouldn't be there. You don't need to be an engineer or an architect to see what happened to those buildings. Any honest investigator would be looking at this and looking for explosives and so forth. The NIST investigation didn't go there, they just would not look for explosives. This has been. Uh, the work of independent researchers, not NIST. So the preconceived notion of NIST is that there's no evidence for explosives and so there's no point in looking. Uh, that is the most unscientific thing that you can possibly think of, not to look because you don't expect to find evidence and in fact the evidence is overwhelming that these red-grade crystals are very high temperature incendiaries. They state these conclusions for which there's virtually no evidence, and then they ignore conclusions that can be drawn from the evidence. The only way that a building can accelerate 
as it collapses is by having pre-engineered, precisely timed and precisely placed explosives, in other words, controlled demolition. We have a professional responsibility and I urge every engineer and architect and demolitions expert and anybody that has any knowledge in this field to examine the evidence and stand up and be counted because the rest of the world is depending upon us. We know we've been lied to about 9-11. Uh, we don't know for sure who did it. We don't know exactly how they did everything. And that's why we need a new investigation to find out. We do know that there was a massive cover-up, that there was evidence hidden and destroyed. The American people absolutely need the truth of 9-11. some kind of uh, consciousness raising on my part before I was willing to look at the, the possibilities. And really, you need to go where the evidence leads. Let's look at it objectively. Let's look at the evidence, not these fabricated computer models and hearsay and all these predetermined conclusions. Uh, let's really open it up again and um, investigate this thing properly and then come to conclusions. I strongly support a, an independent investigation that would be independent of the government, independent of all of the influences that obviously were in effect uh, during the NIST investigation. What happened on 9-11 is not something that is just going to go away. This is very pertinent to us today. I wish to further the investigation and I want to make a difference because I want this to be a safe and better place for my children. Sign the petition on the uh, Architect and Engineers 9-11 Truth uh, website mainly because I wanted to uh, stand behind the families that lost people on 9-11. Uh, the 9-11 Truth movement was started by the families uh, that lost loved ones on that day. And they were all out there alone, screaming for help. And our own country was ignoring them and ignoring their needs and not taking care of them the way we should have after that happened. Most of us who have lived with the events of 9-11 have, as a result, experienced some kind of trauma. It can be very difficult to come to terms with what actually happened at the World Trade Center. In fact, someone told me recently, I wouldn't believe what you're telling me even if it were true. Our petition signers with psychological expertise have stepped forward to offer their insight. While this segment is clearly outside the knowledge base of the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, these experts in psychology highlight their valuable experience for us as to why this evidence can still be so difficult for people to accept. As we know, the horrors of what happened on 9-11 were televised all over the world, and they were televised, in fact, live. We witnessed the deaths of almost 3,000 of our fellow Americans. We know this had a very um, severe and traumatic impact on a large a majority of the population. At this point, we have nine years of hard scientific evidence that disproves the government theory about what happened on September 11th, and yet people continue to be either oblivious to the fact that this information exists or completely resistant to looking at this information. So the question becomes why? Why is it that people have so much trouble hearing this information? From my work, I think we would be remiss not